Hey, what's happening YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am having a great day. Uh, I got a request from a subscriber, Angie Moore, who asked if I would kind of describe more in depth detail as to what uh, TDS meters do and what they read and etc. So I'm going to try to burn, it won't be the most fun video, but I'm going to try to burn through it as quickly as I can. What a TDS meter picks up are all of the uh, organic and inorganic matter in your water column that's suspended. It also will pick up any synthetic chemicals, uh, like, you know, when you add any conditioners or anything like that, it'll pick up that. Um, it also will read, obviously, any plants or fish that are in your uh, aquarium. And of course, it'll pick up everything that you would find on aquarium testers. So, uh, essentially everything, you know. Uh, so if you're gonna test your water with a TDS, like your tap, get a TDS reading, write that number down, then test with your aquarium testers. Add up everything in parts per million, excluding pH, and whatever that number is, if it's significantly lower than what you're picking up on your TDS meter from your tap, then guess what? It's a that is a bunch of mystery stuff you have no idea, because it can, because TDS picks up everything. It could be one of hundreds of, of different things. I can tell you that if your water runs through a softener, that missing number there that you don't know what it is, the majority of it will be sodium. Uh, so for me. I actually find it a lot easier to use um, uh, purified water, and I start from TDS with zero. Purified water has a pH of seven and nothing in it. So, and I build my water. I add what I need to get my general hardness, my carbonate hardness, and my pH where I want it to be, and then I'll simply every now and again test for you know uh, nitrates, nitrites, and ammonia, um, obviously. But also, I'm a plant guy, and I know that plants in order for them to work at their best uh, and do what they're supposed to do I need my TDS I want it around 300 or less yes plants will grow and a TDS that's 400 or higher they won't photosynthesize they won't produce waste as as they should um, they just won't be doing they won't be running to par to be doing what they need to do for your inhabitants uh, so the best environment for your plants guess what is also the best environment for your fish, your shrimp, or whatever you keep. So I I run everything around that, you know. So I will put a couple pictures up uh, of you know aquarium testers and all of that, you know. And uh, also uh, TDS will go up if you use like liquid ferts or anything like that. But it's only temporary. Within a couple hours, your plants will have absorbed any anything like that. But chemical stuff, you know, uh, conditioners. Uh, other stuff, uh, pH, stress coats for the fish, all of this stuff. I don't need any of that stuff, but all of those are going to raise your TDS, um, you know, the whole time until you do a water change again, and then you're just adding all of that crud back in there. Uh, when it comes to plants, I do know uh, I can only say up to a 55-gallon that when I started with uh, pure water at zero before I added any of my buffers, uh, my TDS went up about 80 due to all of the plants and uh, logs and stuff that I had in there. Uh, so keep that in mind, and uh, I hope you found that helpful. I don't have anything else to say on the subject, so I made this as quickly as possible, but if you do have any questions, feel free to ask below, uh, and I will answer to the best of my ability, and uh, I will have another video here in a couple days. I'm going to be talking about shrimp breeding and how to have the best success with that, so we'll go from there. Thank you so much for watching. Probably the fastest video I've ever made. Uh, if you're down in the dumps, you're having a bad day, get up and do something about it. Thank you so much. Bye.